My friend Loretta said that whenever she uses Adobe apps, she wishes she had a little pocket Kalika who she could just pull out and ask questions of. And so this is my way of creating little pocket Kalikas on YouTube that people can use. Hi, I'm Kalika Sharma, and I'm a motion designer and animator turned studio owner, and I run Antidote FX out of the greater New York City area. Today's topic, we're doing an intermediate illustrator tutorial. We're gonna learn how to polish a logo, We'll come up with a couple of different variations on it. We'll use the symmetry tool. I'll teach you how to make symbols and how to experiment with different colorways. Here is where we left off in the last session. We had designed this coffee shop logo from this sketch. Very frequently when I make a logo, I want to see some variations or my client wants to see some variations. And there are some pretty easy ways that you can do that. So the very first thing that I would do is I would duplicate this a few different times so that I have those options ready to go. So first of all, I would go to my artboard tool. And with that artboard tool, if you hold the option or alt key, you can just copy the whole thing by dragging it. Now it gave me an error that said any hidden or locked objects in the artboards will not be moved. And I notice here in my layers panel that I do actually have a layer that's been locked. So I'm going to hit okay. I'm going to hit undo and let's just unlock, lock and unlock any layers here and then turn on the visibility of everything as well. And in the artboard tool, there's this cool thing that you can adjust called move artwork with artboard. And I really like that one. So we're going to make sure that's turned on. And again, going back to that artboard tool, holding option and shift and dragging that over, I'm going to make four of these. So I'm going to go down here. That's the third one. And that's the fourth one. Okay. So this way we could experiment potentially four times going to go back to the selection tool, go back to layers. I'm going to turn off my sketch and turn off my backup. So the way this was set up, we did a bunch of backup layers in case if we needed to go back into the design and make any changes. So the very first thing I'm going to show you is um, just a little bit of making a punch list of all the things that we might want to try out with this logo. Um, and so I would just go down into the color area make sure I have a black fill, click on my stroke color, turn off the stroke color, grab up the type tool. And on a brand new layer, I'm just going to call this list. And off to the side, I'm going to type out my list. Now, if I go to my properties, I can increase the size of this list so I can see it really good. And the things that I want to try out really quick here are um, I want to make the hands symmetrical, simplify the paths on the steam, I could make the beans and stars into symbols. And I'll explain what that is in a moment. Um, and then try out different colorways. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the hands more symmetrical. And this is going to be my original right here. So I'm just going to move my punch list over to the side. And I'm just using my trackpad or trackball to move over. Let's zoom in. And you see how the hands are two different sort of shapes. Uh, the easiest way to make the hands be purely symmetrical would be to decide which one is my favorite. And I would say, this one looks kind of cute. So I would delete this guy. And then I would take this one and I would go to the object menu, transform, reflect. The cool thing about the reflect window is that it does have this option to copy. So after you've chosen what kind of reflection you want, and you see the preview down here, which you can enable here, you see copy, and now you have two of them and you can just move it over. Okay, so now we have these hands symmetrical. Now, sometimes we aren't really sure what we want the thing to look like. We wanna see it draw on symmetrically. And for that, we actually have a different technique that we can use. So it's very helpful if you start drawing your thing first, And then you go to object, repeat, mirror, okay? This is the mirror line. So if you want it to mirror from here, 
you got to move that mirror line and you have to move this top line of it so that it gets into the right spot. And then I can continue drawing it from this point. So just click on that and then close the path here. So just drawing like so. All right. So now it kind of looks like half a flower, which I'm not super juiced about. So I'm just going to click on this point and zoom in a little bit so I can see better and get this hand looking a little more hand-like. And the mirror repeat is allowing us to change both sides at the same time. So that's kind of cool. And then I can move this like so. And then I can go over to the properties, click on the underlined stroke, change my corner to be a round join, and look how much that changes the nature of that drawing right away. And then you can align the stroke inside or outside. I like it aligned just where it is, which is in the center. I can make this a little bit thicker if I want to, or a little bit thinner. I am eventually going to change this into a filled shape. So the location of the stroke doesn't really matter that much. So just being mindful not to mess with my little magic dot here and just work with the handle itself until I'm happy with it. So that's the gist of how to use the mirror repeat. And once you're done doing the mirror repeat, you can simply uh, quit out of this just by going over here, clicking on the containing layer. And now these are just ordinary objects that you can work with. So if I want to change this further, go to the selection tool and it's still mirroring. So I can go back to here. I can change this to be a fill instead of a stroke. I can make any other changes that I want to this side right here just by making sure I'm in the selection tool and I double click to get inside the mirror repeat and then I can make these changes like so. So it happens pretty often that I design something and then I change my mind. And whenever there's a repeated element that signals to my brain that I should probably make it easy to change. And when I have something like this, for example, these stars, these should be what are called symbols. So that way, when I change one of them, it automatically updates all four. So if I go to the window menu and I go to symbols, I can add this star to my symbols. All you do is you select the object, you click on the new symbol button. And you have to make sure that you're selecting it with that selection tool. There's the new symbol calling this star hitting OK, and this is a static symbol. And if I option drag this somewhere else, like here, so now I have these two stars. Uh, it's one star and two stars. See how it doesn't have little brackets to either side? What that means is that I can modify one and it'll modify both. The way you do that, you just double click. It's going to get inside of that and allow you to change it. So here I can make some changes to it. So for example, I can do this and with the pencil tool, maybe I just draw a very basic star and make it just a little bit thicker. I only made it this other color so that I could see it better. So I'll just double click that stroke, change it black, hit OK, and then adjust the size that. All right, I'm going to pretend I love this and I'm going to go over here and just turn off the visibility of the old star. This way I always have it and then I'll make this be a little bit more rounded. Yay. So I like that star. I'm going to go back out of the symbol editing mode and look, it changed it in both spots. So maybe that's something I would do for both the beans and the stars. Adding gradients is pretty straightforward, especially if you have that backup like I showed you guys. So I'm just going to demonstrate this with one of these. There we go. That's my backup ellipse for this layer. 
And if I just go over here on the um, color options and I just flip and I select this guy, go to gradient, I can go to the gradient window, which if it's not open, of course, go to window menu, gradient, and then in the gradient, I should be able to change what kind of gradient it is and show options. That should be obvious, but it's not. Click on this guy. Now it's a radial gradient and I can change the colors of the gradient simply by double clicking one of these little buttons. And now I can change this to a different color. You can change the uh, distribution of the gradient just by dragging where those little buttons are located. So you can have the gradient only modify in a small range based on where you have these buttons, okay? And then, of course, to change the size of it, hold the shift key down and the option key at the same time and pull. And then you can swap where it is in the hierarchy, just pulling it all the way down into another layer, turning off our backup and dragging it all the way to the bottom. So you'll see here that we have one that already has the gradient. It already has some of the colors adjusted. And the last thing I'm going to show you is how to change the color palette. And this is something that's kind of interesting because, you know, sometimes you have the whole thing created. And you're like, what if this was just a little bit different and you want to try out one color or another? So I'm going to do the same thing as I did before, just locking and unlocking layers to make sure everything's unlocked, turn on the visibility of all of it, go to the artboard tool and option drag. Okay, so we're going to pretend that we want to change the color of the second version right here. Okay, so I go back to my selection tool. I select the whole entire thing and I'm going to go to the edit menu, edit colors, recolor artwork. And they do have presets and such as well, but this should be pretty fun. You go to the recolor artwork and you can actually choose what colors you want and how you want them to be distributed. So right now we have this dark slate, the light slate, we have pure white, and then we have this coffee brown. And if you like this distribution of colors, just wanna test it out a little bit different. You can just continue to spin this. You can pull the colors apart to try different things like that. And when it gets kind of close to uh, a color palette that you're interested in trying out, you can always unlink this color thing and you can play with where those colors are falling on the, uh, on the color wheel. Now, there are other ways that you can adjust the colors. You can uh, make this more advanced. You can click on advanced options. You can tell it whether like, okay, this was the old color, this is the new color. You can double click this to get a color picker. So you can try out a completely different color just for that part. Uh, you can swap these guys. So now the coffee stays the brown color. Um, the dark blue is now this dark purple. Um, and so this is kind of a, a nice fun way that you can experiment with different color palettes. They also have this generative recolor thing that if you press on that, it lets you try out different color palettes that uh, Adobe is recommending. So you can try, okay, here are some different options using this combination of colors or that combination of colors. And you can use these as a starting point. I don't recommend using these straight out of the box. Typically they of make some bad decisions here and there that will make you question whether Adobe knows anything about color, but <laughs> you can um, definitely use them as a starting point and then continue to, to tweak those using that recolor window. Now you have a polished logo or at least several options for how to make them. We'll be posting more tutorials like this about once a week. If you want to watch that first tutorial where we learn how to create a logo from a sketch, I'm linking it to you right here. And I'll see you soon. Bye!